Next, the new movie Rosewood just opened. It is the true story of a prosperous black town in Florida. Well, I don't want to break the mood. <laughs> so I'll get your shirt for you. Esther Roll was an actress and dancer, but above all, an advocate who stood at the forefront of a revolution reshaping black family representation in 70s media. Her commitment to authentic portrayal and refusal to perpetuate negatives marked her as an entertainment pioneer. She gave momentum for TV shows to break boundaries and stand out. Join us as we go through the life story of Esther Roll, the lady who altered the media blueprint toward authenticity and empowerment. Early life and upbringing in Florida. In the year 1920, a star was born in the sunny coastal town of Pompano Beach, Florida. Her name was Esther Elizabeth Roll, and she entered this world as the tenth of 18 children born to Bahamian immigrants, Sarah and Jonathan Roll. The Roll family lived a simple life, with Jonathan supporting them through his work as a farmer. He tilled the soil, growing vegetables to feed his enormous family. Though they didn't have much by way of material possessions, the Roll household was rich in love and imagination. Jonathan had a natural talent for storytelling, and he would gather his children around in the evenings to regale them with captivating tales and fables. These nightly rituals sparked a passion for the arts in young Roll. She was enthralled by her father's lyrical language and theatrical delivery. Roll later recalled in an interview with Ebony magazine that he had a way with words that painted such vivid pictures. She would hang on to his every syllable, transported to faraway lands by the cadence of his voice. This early exposure to the craft of performance and narrative planted a seed in Roll's heart that would blossom into an acting career spanning decades. In her childhood, she stood out from other kids as a precocious and creative spirit. She would recruit her siblings to put on plays and variety shows in their backyard, transforming it into a stage. Though she showed promise academically, it was clear early on that Roll's true talents lay in the arts. After finishing grade school in Pompano Beach's segregated school system, she went on to attend Booker T. Washington High School in Miami. She immersed herself in the arts program there, participating in school plays and choral groups. This was the 1930s, and opportunities for young black women were limited, but she dared to dream big. Her sights were set on life beyond Florida's Jim Crow South. At age 18, Rolla graduated as a salutatorian in her high school class. The next phase of her journey was about to begin. She spent a year studying at Spelman College in Atlanta, where she was introduced to the vibrant culture of the Harlem Renaissance and writings by authors like Langston Hughes and Zora Neale Hurston. Though she excelled at Spelman, Rolla felt called to leave the familiarity of the South and chase her dreams up North. So, with fierce determination, she relocated to New York City. This bold decision launched the young woman from humble Southern roots into the bright lights of the big city, where she would hone her craft and blossom into one of the most influential African-American performers of the 20th century. Move to New York City When Esther Roll arrived in New York City in the early 1940s, she encountered a bustling metropolis full of possibilities, but also great uncertainty. Leaving behind the comfort of family in Florida was a risk, but she came armed with unshakable grit and resolved to make it as an actress. Times were tight, so Rolla supported herself working long hours at a pocketbook factory while taking acting classes at night. Though exhausted from manual labor, she approached every drama lesson with vigor and passion. This fierce discipline would be a trademark of Rolla's career. She studied at the George Washington Carver School in Harlem under pioneering black female director Edna Thomas. When Thomas recognized Rolla's promise, she helped her obtain a scholarship to continue training at the New School for Social Research in Greenwich Village. At the New School, she learned techniques like method acting from renowned teachers, including German director Erwin Piscotter. The curriculum emphasized the socio-political context of drama, shaping Rolla's approach to see theater as a vehicle for social commentary. While honing her craft in Manhattan's experimental theaters, she also found a creative home within the city's thriving African-American art scene. She landed roles in Harlem's vibrant theatrical productions, getting her first taste of being a working actress. A major breakthrough came when she met Asadeda Defora, a native of Sierra Leone who pioneered African dance and music on the Broadway stage. Defora recruited Roli to join his groundbreaking troupe Shogola Oloba. For 12 years, she immersed herself in traditional West African dance forms while continuing to act in theatrical productions. By 1960, Rola's knowledge and experience were so extensive that Defora named her director of Shogola Oloba. This leadership role gave her priceless experience managing a professional dance company and nurtured the business savvy she would need to navigate her acting career. 
The 1940s in New York City were formative years for Esther Roll. Through relentless drive and commitment to her artistic development, the young girl from Florida with big dreams transformed into a versatile performer on the brink of her Broadway breakthrough, theater career, and Broadway debut. In the 1950s and 60s, Esther Roll transitioned from an up-and-coming actress to an established Broadway player. Her dedication to honing her craft paid off with a series of acclaimed stage roles that brought her industry-wide respect. She made her Broadway debut in 1962 as Felicity in Jean Genet's incendiary drama, The Blacks, A Clown Show. This avant-garde play centered on a troupe of black actors performing a sort of meta-commentary on racism and colonialism for a simulated white audience. The controversial subject matter placed role at the center of important conversations about theater's role in exposing and dismantling systems of oppression. She followed her boundary-pushing performance in The Blacks, with roles in similarly groundbreaking productions like Blues for Mr. Charlie by James Baldwin in 1964. She demonstrated great emotional depth playing the mother of a black youth murdered by a racist white man in the Deep South. Throughout the 1960s, Esther Roll etched her name into the upper echelon of black dramatic actors with parts in Amen Corner, Zulu, and The Zeta, and Douglas Turner Ward's searing satire day of absence. Audiences and critics took note of her magnetic stage presence and technical mastery. Roll's reputation as a serious dramatic actress was further solidified when she became an original member of the Negro Ensemble Company in 1967. This legendary theater group mounted provocative works spotlighting the African-American experience and nurtured acting talent like Roscoe Lee Brown and Garrett Morris. Within the vibrant theater community, she was admired for her daring choices and willingness to tackle challenging subject matter head-on. Though the roles took an emotional toll, she approached each meticulously, fully surrendering her mind and body to embody these complex characters. Her pursuit of authenticity and social impact drove her stage career. By 1970, after over a decade of consistently mesmerizing Broadway audiences, Esther Roll stood proudly as a leading lady of the theater world. Her sterling stage reputation opened the door next to the exciting frontier of television, where her career would reach new heights. Breakthrough TV Roll on Maud. In the early 1970s, Esther Roll stood at the peak of her theater career after captivating Broadway audiences for over a decade. But a surprise opportunity was about to rocket her to an even wider audience, television. The vehicle for Roll's breakthrough TV role was Maud, a spin-off sitcom from All in the Family centered on an outspoken liberal protagonist played by B. Arthur. When producers sought an actress for the recurring role of Maud's housekeeper, Florida Evans, they knew Esther Roll was the perfect fit. She was busy touring with Melvin Van Peebles musical Don't Play Us Cheap when the Maud offer came through. She initially turned down the audition, reluctant to divert energy away from her theater work, but ultimately her curiosity got the better of her. When she arrived on set to read for producers, Rolla made one thing clear up front she would play a maid, but the writer would write her as a real human being. She wanted to ensure Florida Evans would not be a stereotypical domestic servant character used for cheap laughs. The producers agreed, and she inhabited the role of Florida with such dimension, warmth, and dignity that audiences fell in love. Though originally intended as a minor part, Florida quickly became a fan-favorite recurring character due to Roll's performance. Over three seasons from 1972 to 1974, encompassing nearly 30 episodes, Rolla transformed what could have been a generic maid into Maud's wise and caring confidant, the moral center grounding the show's wacky humor. She gave Florida heart, wit, and a quiet inner strength that popped off the screen. Behind the scenes, Rolla leveraged her stage experience to enrich the role of Florida Evans. She studied the script meticulously to shape authentic dialogue and mannerisms. She provided input on costumes and set design elements to ensure an accurate depiction of a working-class black domestic servant. Most impactfully, Rolla pushed back on jokes she felt crossed the line into offensive stereotypes. The producers came to value her perspective, and Rolla became empowered to elevate the character of Florida beyond the original conception. By the time Maud ended, Florida Evans had evolved into such a beloved TV fixture that producers saw potential for her own spin-off sitcom. The character's popularity was a testament to Esther Roll's acting prowess. She took a supporting role initially meant for just a few episodes and transformed Florida into a mainstay. In 1974, her talents as a comedic actor were finally given the spotlight they deserved when the character Florida Evans became the matriarch of Good Times, the first African-American family sitcom. 
Millions of Americans welcomed the Evans family into their living rooms each week during Good Times' six-season run. While comedy and social commentary anchored the show, it was Rowley's warm, relatable portrayal of Florida that gave Good Times its heart. Good Times, Triumph and Turmoil When Good Times premiered on CBS in 1974, it made history as the first sitcom to portray an American black family in a nuanced and humanizing way. At the show's anchor was Esther Roll, as working-class mother Florida Evans, the role she pioneered on Maud. Set in a Chicago housing project, Good Times chronicled the Evans family's struggles and joys as they overcame hardships like unemployment through strength of character. Florida was the strong maternal center holding the family together. From the start, Rolla insisted the show maintain a realistic depiction of black family life, down to the smallest details. She fought for the inclusion of a father character, James Evans, played brilliantly by John Amos. Roll simply refused to perpetuate an unhealthy stereotype of the black father abandoner. Thanks in large part to Roll's advocacy, the two-parent Evans family portrayed on Good Times stood as a landmark shift from TV's typical portrayal of black households. America grew to adore the close-knit Evans clan. However, behind the scenes, tensions brewed over creative differences. As the show progressed, the J.J. character played by Jimmy Walker became a breakout fan favorite. J.J.'s dynamite catchphrase and comedic antics dominated storylines. For Esther Roll, this shift toward buffoonish humor felt like a betrayal of the show's initial aims. She was dismayed to see serious topics like poverty, racism, and unemployment replaced with J.J.'s goofy schemes week after week. Both Rowley and co-star John Amos voiced concerns to producers that J.J.'s character promoted negative stereotypes and tarnished the show's image, but their protests fell on deaf ears. The producers were too enamored with ratings goldmine J.J. By 1977, she had reached her breaking point. In an act of creative integrity, she decided to leave the show at the height of its popularity. For her, maintaining the dignity of Florida Evans mattered more than money or fame. In a parting interview, she criticized the minstrel-esque direction of the show, saying that she did not want to be part of putting out negative images of black people. Roll's departure left the future of good times uncertain. The producers scrambled to reshape storylines without the Evans matriarch. Ratings declined in her absence. After attempting new characters and plot directions, the producers swallowed their pride. A year later, they asked Rolla to return for the show's final season, offering her a pay bump and more creative control. She agreed, but only on the condition that J.J.'s character be written more respectfully. Her homecoming episode in the late 1978 drew millions, proving Florida Evans was the true star fans tuned in for each week. Though her triumphant return boosted ratings, it was not enough to save the declining show. In the summer of 1979, Good Times aired its last episode, closing the curtain on a culture-defining sitcom era. Her dramatic range. Though nothing could match the popularity of Good Times at its peak, Esther Roll continued working steadily in the late 1970s through a series of standout television, film, and stage performances that further displayed her dramatic talents. In 1978, she won an Emmy Award for her supporting turn in the television movie Summer of My German Soldier. Her empathetic portrayal of a rural housekeeper touched viewers, as did her performance as Aunt T in a 1979 adaptation of Maya Angelou's I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings, which earned her another Emmy nomination. Roll also made guest appearances in dramatic serials like Flamingo Road in 1982 and The Love Boat in 1983 and 1985, and she returned to her stage roots with turns in an NAACP-sponsored production of The Member of the Wedding in 1982, and a 1986 revival of A Raisin in the Sun as Walter Lee's wife, Ruth. In 1989, Roll's film profile rose with her critically acclaimed performance as Idella, the housekeeper in the Academy Award-winning Driving Miss Daisy, opposite Jessica Tandy and Morgan Freeman. Though she'd sworn off maid roles earlier in her career, she connected with the humanity and moral strength of Idella. She elevated the supporting character with astute emotional range and grace. She followed this triumph with roles in films like My Fellow Americans in 1996 and Rosewood in 1997. Well into her late 70s, she continued gracing screens big and small with characters brimming with wisdom, humor, and resilience. Each part Esther Roll took on in the latter stages of her career further cemented her reputation as one of the most commanding and versatile black actresses of her era. While nothing could match the glory days of good times, her acting prowess remained undimmed by the passing years. Advocacy, 
and accolades. By the late 1980s, Esther Roll stood as a trailblazing icon of dignity and resilience through her pioneering television roles. Off-screen, she channeled her fierce moral conviction into tireless advocacy for equality and social justice. She used her celebrity platform to raise awareness of issues impacting African Americans and other marginalized groups. She supported initiatives around housing access, education reform, women's rights, voting participation, and anti-poverty programs. In 1987, her leadership earned her induction into the NAACP Hall of Fame, alongside luminaries like Lena Horne and Diana Ross. The honor reflected her commitment to advancing civil rights both through her acting and activism. Three years later, the NAACP paid tribute to Rolla's ongoing contributions by awarding her the organization's Chairman's Civil Rights Leadership Award. This made her the first woman bestowed with the NAACP's highest honor. In remarks at the awards ceremony, she urged the audience to carry on the legacy of pioneers like Martin Luther King Jr. through sustained grassroots advocacy. She also supported other groups like the National Council of Negro Women, Delta Sigma Theta Sorority, and the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, reflective of the diversity of causes she championed. She testified before Congress to advocate for arts funding and media diversity, and she conducted acting workshops for marginalized youth, hoping to open doors for the next generation. In 1991, the Black Filmmakers Hall of Fame inducted role in recognition of her groundbreaking television career. As a pioneer of positive on-screen representations, her place in the Hall of Fame was undeniable. Whenever possible, she traveled to support scholarship fundraisers at historically black colleges like Spelman College and Wilberforce University. Education was a cause close to Rolla's heart. Her outspokenness on controversial issues sometimes drew criticism, but she weathered these attacks with grace, staying true to her convictions. At the essence, she leveraged her celebrity to speak for those denied a voice in the corridors of power. Long after her television heyday, she continued showing up and speaking out. She embraced the responsibility that came with her platform, working to bend the moral arc of the universe toward justice right up until her final days. Final Roles and Passing Approaching her 80s, Esther Roll maintained an active acting schedule, appearing in a string of films and television movies in the 1990s that drew critical praise. She endeavored to imbue each role, no matter how small, with dignity and humanity. In 1993's House of Cards, Roll portrayed a homeless mother whose dire circumstances bring her into conflict with politician Francis Urquhart. Though a minor part, critics singled out Roll's moving performance. The next year in the drama My Fellow Americans, Roll lit up the screen as Mrs. Selma Duffy in scenes opposite Jack Lemmon and James Garner as ex-presidents on the run. She held her own against these heavyweight stars. She landed her final substantial big-screen role in 1997's Rosewood, a dramatization of the 1923 massacre of a prosperous black town in Florida. As Aunt Sarah, one of the town's eldest residents, she delivered a nuanced, haunting portrayal of this little-known atrocity. Though Rosewood was Rolla's last major film, she continued acting up until the very end. Her final on-screen appearance came in the independent movie Train Ride released in 2000, filmed two years prior. Tragically, complications from diabetes caused Esther Roll's passing on November 17, 1998 in Culver City, California. She was just nine days shy of her 79th birthday when she succumbed after battling the disease for many years. Her untimely death shocked and saddened fans and peers alike. At her funeral, Fellow actors including James Avery delivered emotional eulogies, praising her generosity and principled stances during her groundbreaking career. Other Good Times cast members were also in attendance, coming together to honor their former co-star. However, one glaring absence stood out, that of Jimmy Walker, who had played the role of J.J. Evans on the show. Walker's non-attendance at the funeral highlighted the strained relationship between the two actors. For years leading up to her passing, well-known creative differences and personal rivalries had plagued their working relationship. In her personal life, she never married after divorcing her first and only husband, Oscar Robinson, in 1975. Though she had no children biologically, she treasured her family, which included 18 siblings and numerous nieces and nephews. Per her request, Rolla's funeral was held at Bethel African Methodist Episcopal Church in her hometown of Pompano Beach, Florida. The local community she cherished as a child came together to bid a tearful but celebratory farewell. Personality and Approach to Acting Behind Esther Roll's numerous acclaimed on-screen roles lay an exacting work ethic 
and a larger-than-life force of will. Though warm and jovial off-camera, she approached every part with uncompromising rigor. Roll studied scripts obsessively, analyzing the tiniest details to build authentic characters inside and out. She scoured texts like period wardrobe catalogs to shape costumes true to the era. No nuance escaped her notice if it meant perfecting a role. Once in character, she disappeared wholly into her parts. Fellow actors often spoke of the intensity she brought to scenes, becoming the embodiment of whomever she portrayed. But this complete immersion took a toll. In a rare candid interview with Ebony magazine, she admitted there were scenes so emotionally draining that she would return home and collapse into bed for days. Her devotion to authenticity exacted a price. This meticulous approach extended to her legendary persistence in advocating for realistic storylines and multi-dimensional characters. She would famously tell directors, I know more about being black and female than you ever will. Her strong-willed personality first became evident before Good Times even began filming. She point-blank refused the role upon seeing the script featured no father, a normalized absence she deemed harmful. Despite pushback, she stubbornly insisted producers create the character James Evans. She simply would not back down on matters of black representation, no matter how big the blowback. Roll again showed her willingness to walk away on principle during Good Times' run. When she felt the show diminishing core values, she left at the peak of its popularity. She rejected compromising dignity for fame's spoils. Her uncompromising stances caused friction, but all who worked with her acknowledged their shared pursuit of excellence. Actor John Amos called her a consummate professional, whose only aim was upholding on-screen integrity. Though line-crossing scenes often left her emotionally drained, her devotion never wavered. She once told an interviewer that she went through the fire so that others know they can too. This mix of Midwestern affability and steely backbone made Esther Roll a commanding, unforgettable presence. She felt called not just to entertain, but to uplift. This crusade shaped her uncompromising approach and lasting legacy. Lifelong dedication to civil rights. Esther Roll's crusade for equality and social justice stretched back to her childhood roots. Growing up in 1920s, segregated Florida molded Roll's moral compass and planted the seeds of activism that blossomed throughout her career. As one of 18 children in the close-knit agricultural community of Pompano Beach, young Rowley experienced firsthand the injustices of Jim Crow laws. The Roll children attended dilapidated separate but equal schools and were barred from entering white-owned businesses. Rolla dreamed of becoming an author, but realized race and gender limited her prospects. These harsh realities lit a fire in Rolla's belly, even as she hid her simmering anger to avoid conflict. The deep-rooted conviction fueled her rapid rise to stardom as she shattered stereotypical roles for African-American women through skill and grit. But she never forgot where she came from. At the height of her celebrity on Good Times, she began lending her voice to civil rights causes, speaking at rallies and fundraising events. She picketed discriminatory businesses and registered disenfranchised voters. She funneled earnings into supporting the United Negro College Fund, NAACP, National Urban League, Martin Luther King Jr. Center for Nonviolent Social Change, and other groups advancing equality. Behind the scenes, she mentored young black performers trying to break into an industry rife with prejudice. She fought for fair compensation and wrote letters urging television execs to improve minority representation. Her advocacy occasionally sparked criticism from those who felt she should be grateful for her own success. But these attacks only strengthened her resolve. In interviews, Rolla pushed back that her achievements do not blind her to the struggles faced by millions of her people. Her duty is to reach down and lift others up. Through tireless activism that stretched over six decades, Esther Roll forged herself into one of the 20th century's most influential civil rights champions. Though often overlooked, her bold stand against prejudice helped pave the way toward a more just society. Lasting influence in Hollywood and television. The luminous career of Esther Roll stands as a timeless inspiration, evidence of the soaring heights achievable through courage of conviction paired with uncommon talent. Both on screen and off, she pushed boundaries and norms, paving the way for generations of black artists to come. Her nuanced portrayal of Florida Evans in good times secured her place in pop culture lore. The Evans family stood out as a rare gift amidst a media landscape devoid of authentic black life. Millions finally saw their realities reflected in a three-dimensional black family's joys and struggles. And Rolla's advocacy behind the scenes ensured her character maintained dignity. 
In the decades since Good Times aired, her courageous decisions to walk away rather than perpetuate demeaning stereotypes continue inspiring performers striving for integrity. Tracy Ellis Ross, Kerry Washington, Issa Rae, and scores of black actresses upholding their creative visions point to role as inspiration. Without her principled stands, their paths would be much harder. By insisting television portray African Americans as fully realized people, she opened the door for hit shows like The Cosby Show, Fresh Prince of Bel Air, Blackish, and many more. As the first hit black sitcom, Good Times proved such shows could succeed, catalyzing a wave of diverse programming. This revolution rendered exclusions of the past unacceptable. Subsequent generations of pioneering black actors also looked to her fearless activism in confronting entertainment industry racism head on. From speaking at college campuses to testifying before Congress, she leveraged her celebrity to elevate issues of underrepresentation. She took bold risks to carve space for those historically marginalized. Roll's uncompromising example lit a fire under advocates pushing Hollywood to improve minority hiring and culturally sensitive portrayals. Though much work remains, her impact resonates. By portraying Florida Evans with such dignity, complexity, and heart, Esther Roll ensured made characters written as racist tropes faded away. The stereotypes she shattered can never be fully reassembled. While battles for on-screen inclusion continue, Esther Roll's courageous stands remind us that entertainment can serve as a mirror reflecting our shared humanity. Through her extraordinary talent and integrity, she opened millions of eyes to recognize their own lives within those of the Evans family. This ability to transcend prejudice and connect remains her lasting light. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.